know you have a, a fibrous diet, Ryan. So I know you're quite regular. Uh, oh, wait. No. Oops. The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh is a, uh, it's a new take on an old friend. The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh is sweetness in show form. The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh are not necessarily new for me. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Falling Towers Watch the First Podcast, the podcast in which we watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. But you still can. Sometimes we even hit record when we're not ready just to keep us on our toes and see some cool improv. Uh, today, of course, we're doing our review. This is Disney spinoff month, of course. We're doing The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh from 1988. Uh, this first episode is entitled, Pooh Ought to Be in Pictures. That is not an Instagram suggestion, or is it? Uh, you know we have a very special guest today. He's an incredible actor. His name is Josh Sussman. Woo! Oh, hello. With that introduction, I wasn't sure if you were going to introduce these guys. Those guys ought to be in pictures. Um, everybody what is just... that behind you? with Doug? Okay, your arm's blocking it off. I'm trying to read the logo, the Disney logo that has the name with Doug Walker. Oh. Disney oh. December. What is that? Mm. Who's Doug? <laughs> I don't know. But everybody at home, if you're just listening in, uh, Josh ha is wearing. Winnie the Pooh garments all up and down, different kinds of Winnie the Poohs. He's got poo all over him. Uh, he has poo on his pillow. He has two poos on the chair next to him. Uh, it, he is just the most pooed out guy I've ever seen. And it's freaking glorious. Uh, if it's too much, I have another shirt that I could change into. No. Can I show you? Yeah. Okay, you talk while I change my clothes into my next outfit. All right, we'll just zoom in on the poos real quick. Dr. Muhammad Noor is here. Hello, always pleasure to be on Flying Towers. Watch the first of things. I do not have as many as poo paraphernalia. <laughs> yeah, Muhammad gets rid of his poo. Uh, my name is Ryan T. Husk, and I'm going to try to keep the poo jokes at a minimum today. <laughs> <laughs> but no promises. Oh, look at this. Oh, new poo shirt. <laughs> wow. Which one do you like better for today? The one you're wearing now is more visibly poo. The other one you have to kind of zoom in to see the poos. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, but we can flip flop back and forth. Oh, you know, I'll, I'll actually get into this little point in a little bit. Uh, everybody at home, we're doing uh, Disney spinoff months. Make your suggestions in the comments below. What would you like us to review? Just type WTF and whatever show you would like us to review. And please tell us where we can find it. For example, today you would have said WTF, the new adventures of Pooh on Disney+. Plus. That's it. Time to get into it. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Give us a five-star rating if you're listening in. And click that share button and see if your friends would like to see this, please. Let's but get up into this. Video twice. Right. That has a, that's a, two positives equal a negative there. So I'm lost, Muhammad. What, what's next? Now it's your favorite part of the show, the predictaments, where we predict what each other thought of the show after seeing it. Very true. It is my favorite part. Here we go. So let's make our predictions here. Uh, Muhammad and I have known each other for quite some time, a few years. Josh and I have known each other. It's well documented, easily 10 years by now, I'd say. Uh, oh. Muhammad, even more, yeah. Muhammad and Josh are getting to know each other. So we're getting pretty close when we make our predictions, I think. Mm -hmm. Muhammad, I predict that you are medium on this. I predict that you did not hate it. I predict that you did not run home and tell all your friends about it. I predict that it is not a water cooler show for you. You will not 
lean on the Duke University water cooler and be like, did you see the new Adventures of Pooh from 1988? Let's talk about <laughs> it. Uh, Josh, uh, you are extremely decked out in Pooh paraphernalia. So I'm going to guess that you enjoyed this show. I'm going to guess that you've seen every episode. In fact, you may have seen every episode more than once um, and that you are happy to review this show. Those are my predictions. What do you think, Mohammed? Ryan, I'm going to guess that you were... I think you were a little bored. <laughs> I don't think you hated it, but I think you were a little bit bored with the show. And I think this is this is this is pushing the young end for what you tend to like to watch. Josh, I'm going to make a complicated prediction for you. Obviously, you like poo in general because that, that's very clear from <laughs> about your dick down. That said, I'm not positive you would watch the second. I mean, I think you like poo, but more from a nostalgic aspect as opposed to like I'm eager to watch more poo now. So I, I think it might be a little bit of a mixed bag in that sense. All right. Yeah. Well, Your thoughts, I, Josh? How do you think that Muhammad and I feel about poo? Well, I know you have a, a fibrous diet, Ryan. So I know you're quite regular. Uh, oh, <laughs> wait. No. no I, mis I completely misunderstood. No, no, you understood. It was a fair misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this was not your introduction to Winnie the Pooh. Um, and I also, I don't know if we're going on a tangent, in your background, we, there's Owl and Eeyore, who are beloved characters we did not see in there. And, and Rue, we didn't see him either. Um, but I'm going to... Or Kanga. Or Kanga, yeah. Um, it's... It was... I think that's always... It's fun. It's like, I think you had... I don't think maybe you were quite so bored, or maybe you were, because sometimes the episodes are broken up into two 11 minute ones, but, um, you know, you're okay. I think you enjoyed some stuff, but I, you're in no rush. I'm going to say maybe like a six ish for Ryan. Um, but it's on a different scale because it's not, you're not the target audience. <laughs> so I don't know how you put it on these different scales. So, but at Muhammad, I'm going to, um, I wonder, were you projecting when you talked about Ryan's boredom? And I, I feel like I've seen you project in the past. I so, too. huh. So I want to put Muhammad at a nice, somewhere between a, above a five, but below a 5.5, .5, somewhere in that region. Where I, I think you guys maybe would have liked it more if it was slashed in half the time. And it was just like a nice little poo, but a nice little fluff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they should have. Yeah, nobody likes that poos that poo take on. a long time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, everybody, it's not going to get any better. <laughs> Stick around to enjoy more poo jokes or uh, innuendos. Uh, here we go. What is next for us? I got it. Everybody at home, make your predictions now. Do you think I liked it? Do you think Muhammad liked it? Do you think Josh, there's no way he liked it? Um, make your predictions. We gave you some helpful hints. But take your time. Type it out in the live yep. chat or in the comments below. Dr. Muhammad Noor here is going to buy us all a little bit of time by telling us what this show is even a poot. I like that. Thank you. I will try. After a harrowing ordeal, hiding from and then eating some cooked carrot slices, <laughs> Christopher Robin and Animal Friends go to a monster movie, Birdzilla. Various antics ensue as the animals bounce about the theater, followed by a musical interlude to convince Piglet that the movie isn't real and thus not so scary. Christopher Robin and the animals then decide to make their own monster movie, but Tigger gets stuck in a giant carrot costume and scares the other animals silly. But Piglet is very sad because he wasn't brave enough to protect his friends. But when the giant carrot costume blows onto Pooh in a storm, he bravely comes out to save his friend, proving that he too can be a hero. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> very nice. Uh, all right, everybody. Now you're about to find out what is going on in our heads for real. In a segment, Dr. Muhammad, oh, it looks like a Klingon or a Vulcan like this. Dr. Muhammad oh, Noor 
like to like call. Expectation. We spend a little bit of time on what you expect. I would never hit you, Josh. A little bit of time on what you expect, and a lot more time on what you pitch in in this show. <laughs> All right. It's the violence that was taken out of the of the poo episode. Yeah. So yeah. I'll just put it in here now. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Muhammad, why don't you get us started? Let us know, please, what you expected before, if anything, before you watched this first episode of the new adventures of winnie the pooh actually since he's not wearing pants it should be called the nude adventures of winnie the pooh but whatever oh gosh <laughs> oh bother <laughs> so i i i'm aware of poo i used to have a stuffed poo much like uh, josh's when i was a little kid in fact i used to have a whole family of animals and poo was my son-in-law in the family tree he was married to the stuffed dog that was, that was my daughter so anyway <laughs> they were they were the parents of pink panther by the way too um oh. yeah i hope you wrote fan fiction yeah it would, it would have been interesting <laughs> so i was aware of poo um certainly when my kids were young i remember seeing various poo shows with them and that's actually what i remember the most about poo and i remember uh i remember my daughter having this little stuffed poo that if you squeezed it it would say that was a very snuggly huggly you know <laughs> things like that <laughs> but i remember she would like get impatient and just sometimes just like hit it to make it say stuff <laughs> But it was still doing things. But I remember watching the shows too, and you know, I'm familiar with all the characters from it. For this particular series, I I didn't know it existed. I mean, 1989, I was in college. I I don't think I was watching Pooh then. <laughs> so, you know, I, I didn't have any particular expectations except just some episode with more of their adventures. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Josh, without giving anything away, before you watch this first episode, what did you expect, if anything? Had you well, heard of Winnie the Pooh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm familiar um, with the Winnie, Winnie the Pooh, and I've even been on his ride at um, Disneyland. Wow. So uh, the character was no stranger um, to me. Um, but before watching this first episode, I had memories of watching this very show as a kid. Um, and every day before school, and I had... Uh, everyone from the 100 Acre Wood, I had all of them. I had a big, big, big Winnie the Pooh. Um, he's still there back in my bedroom in New Jersey. Uh, and so, yes, I'm quite familiar. I've always loved Winnie the Pooh. Sometimes people even ask, who is your favorite Disney character? And it changes, but Winnie the Pooh is often the answer. Sometimes it goes back and forth between Winnie the Pooh and Roger Rabbit, which I know are very... Ooh different ones but i usually find i rotate between those two i ex but i uh so here because i know these are the new adventures but growing up i grew up at a time when this i was probably seeing this side by side as the many adventures which were the original stories that had the narrator there's no narrator here but so it's not like something that was around for many years and ooh, this is the new one so this was always like a, I always knew this as a side-by-side -side companion piece, if that mm. makes sense. It all does make sense to me, at least. Muhammad looks pissed, but I get it. Oh, no, Muhammad. Oh. So I'll tell you all what I expected before watching this first uh, adventure. Um, I expected this, based on the title, The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, I thought it was going to be more recent. I didn't realize it was going to be 1988. When I put it on, I was like, oh, the new adventures are 1988. I guess it's all subjective. It's all, you know, in 1988, it was new, and they just kept the name. They didn't change the name 20 years later because it wasn't new anymore. So, um, Same thing with New York. They still call it New York instead of New Jersey. They That's don't a very good point. New Mexico. So, yeah, New England. We could do this all day, New Hampshire. So, <laughs> New Brunswick. New Wasn't <laughs> yeah. the original Pooh a bear in New like 1918 or something like that? I remember something like that. The original Christopher, the actual boy Christopher Robin and the and the bear. I think this was from something from like 1918 or so-ish. A.A. was Like World War One era. That sounds about right. See, I didn't know that stuff, but here, here's what I did expect. Here's what I did know. I remember Winnie the Pooh. I feel like I'd seen the cartoon back in the day when I was a kid. I also remember my dad talking about Winnie the Pooh. 
and that he and his two brothers would play, I, I don't know, Winnie the Pooh or whatever. And that my dad would be Eeyore because he could do the lowest voice. So he had to be Eeyore because he could do that voice. I too, Josh Sussman, have ridden that poo ride several, several, many dozens of times at Disneyland. Uh, and when I do, I think of my dad because I think, you know, I hope he would enjoy this, sh this thing because I don't really enjoy it that much. What I enjoy when I'm doing that ride is thinking about the joy that it brings an older generation. You know, because their stuff's getting washed out with to new stuff. But I hope that older people sit in that Winnie the Pooh ride and go, oh, this is what I grew up with. This is fun and comforting. But anyway, so that's what and there's more to say about that. Look, I even got a honey stick. More on that in a moment. Um, the point is what I expected was for it to be. In a way, nostalgic, but not for me, nostalgic, like it, that it would. It would feel nostalgic for somebody else in my from my perspective. It feels like somebody else's nostalgia. So I would enjoy it in that regard. I hope that makes sense because that's how it felt. It felt like I'm I'm rooting for it to make other people happy. I, you know, but I guess it's aimed at kids now, but I more look at it for older people. But that's what we expected in a roundabout way. Here's the key. What did we actually get? Dr. Nor? what did you get as you strategically grab your notes and your clipboard? Yes, got the clipboard ready. <laughs> um, I, have a, I have a lot of thoughts on this one. Um, first, I mean, I will say I thought it was a decent kid story, you know, and uh, there's definitely like the target audience here seemed to be fairly young kids. Uh, I felt that it was fairly, very easy to follow what was happening. And, the, and there were, I'll have a few exceptions to that in a little bit, but overall, the overall plot was fairly easy to follow. I think there are a few characters, so you just got to know, okay, yes, I understand who Pooh is, I understand who Piglet is, I understand what they're like, I understand Tigger is a little bit more crazy, and you know, so that was good. Um, I think this is a show that, like, if I were five or six, I would have loved it. <laughs> you know, that, I wish Michael uh -oh. Caine Rosenberg, I wish Michael Caine Rosenberg were here, because I would be like, this is a kid's show, not Avatar. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, in that sense, it was fine. Um, some of the things that that were not the best for me, none of these things are like terrible, but one of the things that wasn't the best for me is this old gag of getting stuck in a costume. I feel like that's been done to death. Now, flip side, if you're aiming for kids, I guess done to death doesn't matter because they haven't seen anything. You're starting mm -hmm. fresh, so that's fine. It was a little bit more slapstick than I than I would personally prefer, like the whole like the, the theater scene with getting stuck here and yanked over here and now the big web and you know. Yeah, see so that that's not really my preference. It's interesting, the one thing which bugged me the, the most, and even this wasn't tragic or anything like that, is I would have loved to have seen more clarifying what was actually happening in real life, like the parents' view, as opposed to what was more the make-believe thing. And we had that in the very beginning. Like That opening scene was actually, I thought, was great. I actually thought that was awesome because, like, here's this whole thing where they're running through this like monster lab, and oh my goodness, the mummy is is chasing them, and it was like the scary, you know, oh, it's the mummy. And it went back to that. So I was like, okay, I, I can see that. Okay, this is what the kid was playing with. We never got that for the rest of the show, though. So, like, what was happening to the theater? Was he, like, taking his toys and throwing them around the theater? Like, what what was happening there? I mean, I just seen the make-believe worldview. But since I was teased with this idea of the contrast between the make-believe worldview and the real-world worldview, I was kind of looking forward to that. And we never saw that after, like, after basically that opening scene. So that, to me, was... I would have, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a deficiency, but I would have preferred to have had more of that sort of contrast, you know, throughout the show as opposed to just that opening piece. So I'll pass the baton from there. Mm, fascinating. Josh, what did you actually get when you watched this episode that you didn't like? Well, I will tell you, but, and I realized I don't think I even accurately answered what my expectations were. I just talked about being familiar with everything. So I didn't really go into that, but. But I'll go into what I got, um, having been very familiar with this show, I felt when I started, like, I don't know if I've seen this episode or if I remember it, which makes me wonder, sometimes certain TV shows have certain episodes that weren't really in the circulation um, of it or certain ones, because it's very rare to see the real world as... Um, Muhammad pointed out, like with the mom, I don't think 
we usually, maybe she's been in like maybe one other or that I remember, but um, seeing that is not something that happens. And usually I would say 99% of things take place in the 100 acre wood. So to have that, at Chris, to start at Christopher Robin's house was strange. I didn't remember that. And and I love Winnie the Pooh, but even I love Winnie the Pooh was like, I'm not sure how, uh, and then starting out with carrots are good. There's no, when um, Muhammad was going to talk about the things he didn't like, and it was maybe the getting stuck in a costume, I was going to predict, maybe it's that they never learned that carrots and broccoli are good. Um, good point. Um, and, and at first I was wondering, because we never saw the mom's face. And then the usher, like the popcorn bucket, fell on his face. And I was wondering, oh, are we going to not see adults? But then later we did see him. And Ryan, I don't know if you had this thought. When Piglet fell in the popcorn, I love popcorn, but I don't eat pork. So if, if Piglet falls into your bucket of popcorn, are you still able to eat the popcorn? I mean, he's not. Is that mm. like big covered popcorn? You know, that's, this has created many sleepless nights on my part as well. I just uh, thought for that particular scene, though, like, it's so gross because he had gum all over him, and now it's all in the popcorn. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought too. Well, you know what? Let me. Uh, that's a perfect way to pass things along. Let me tell y'all what I actually got here. Thank you, Josh. What I actually got was a, a little bit of uh, a little bit of what's the word? trepidation because I'm worried about hurting Josh's feelings because I oh. not. I'm not sure that I really enjoyed this show that much. And what I like about this show is the vicariousness of it, is vicariously enjoying it for people of yesteryear or vicariously enjoying it for kids or vicariously enjoying enjoying it for other people. But for me personally, I did find it a little bit boring, me personally. And I didn't uh, and as soon as we got Christopher Robin, I'm like, get this guy out of here. I don't care about like I'm not watching this show for a human. And then I and then I kind of thought, I feel like that was a feeling I had when I was a kid too. Was I didn't want I, I wanted the Christopher Robin guy out of here. I just wanted to be lost in this world, in the Winnie yes. the Poop world. And I felt like every time Christopher Robin shows up, it kind of just takes you out of it. Uh, what a- yeah, so that's kind of how I felt. Um, and we didn't get to meet some of the characters, and the story was kind of mm. no Eeyore. That was really sad. Yeah. So no that's where I was. Eeyore. I'm rooting for it, and I like that it exists, and I love it. But it wasn't that enjoyable for me. Um, well, Ryan, yeah, ahead, what, what I'm tr- what I was trying to figure out because I didn't think it was a great episode and I didn't have that great a time with this episode. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was trying to figure out, and I don't know the answer because there's certain things that we love as kids, but then there's certain things we love as kids that we're able to enjoy just as much as adults. And I'm just trying to figure to, as our brain, I know our brains change. Um, and it's like, huh, wait, mine. is this something? But then, okay. So one of the things I love about poo, like this pillow today, is my new favorite day. He has a lot of great quotes. When people ask what I like about him, I like his attitude, his... So it's not necessarily the story. And there's... Um, this, he has a lot of great things and I think a nice quality. And there's a lot of books that have are, go very deep, like The Tao of Piglet and The Tao of Pooh. And it, it deals with like Piglet being fearful and overcoming things. And there's are... I don't think necessarily in this episode, but there are just with their the archetypes of the characters they are, there's a lot of benefit to be learned and um, motivate, motivated from, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, this episode, it wasn't, I don't, I, I think other episodes are better. My memory, I remember certain episodes in my head that are great, that are feel good, that are cute. And I just think, I think this first episode didn't go there unless my brain changed so much because it was so important. I watched the episode before I left for school in the morning. I think maybe it was on at 7.30 in the morning and I had to leave as soon at eight at eight. And I was like, oh, like I was so into it. 
You know, uh, you mentioned the, some poo quotes, and I I do feel like every time I see a poo paraphernalia thing, it's got a poo quote. That's a really good point. So I just did a quick Google. Right. Listen to how nice this one is. How lucky am I to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard? Yes. Right. Beautiful. That's beautiful. And when nice. Mr. Pup had to go off to kindergarten to go to school and he was saying goodbye. Fuck Christopher Robin. But yeah, I don't miss Christopher That's going to be, be our really uh, love tagline. <laughs> That's going to be a poo quote. <laughs> oh, fuck Christopher Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you allowed to say that word on this show? Have you ever said that before? Yeah, I think so. We keep oh. it to a minimum. Uh, kids at home that are watching this just strike that from the record. Um, yeah. Let me uh, tell you guys a quick little thing. Oh, so I'm wearing this shirt, The Assassin's Apprentice, uh, today because this is a film that I produced alongside uh, Mr. Paul Hickman, who uh, also wrote it, executive produced it, and a bunch of cool actors and fun people, Star Trek actors like Armin Shimmerman. Mm. Uh, Mr. Bob Picardo, Marina Sirtis, lots of cool people. Anyway, Tracy Coco, of course. So why am I going on that tangent? Well, because myself and a lot of people from this group, you know, the production team and the actors and stuff, we like to go to Disneyland sometimes. And we have some fun together. In fact, we just went yesterday. And uh, when we go, when we first went on the Winnie the Pooh ride, I expressed my joy and happiness for it. And I'm glad that it's around and it feels like a, a relic that's still hanging on to the past. And I think that's wonderful. And, you know, that somehow convinced them all that the Winnie the Pooh ride is my favorite ride. And I don't have the heart to tell them, of course it's not. It's, of course, it's the Incredicoaster at California Adventure, which was originally called uh, Screaming Over California, right? Or California Screaming, whatever. California. So anyway, it's amazing. That's a great one. Anyway, the point is when uh, one day I had to go home early to get some work done, they all teased me. They were texting me saying, ah, we went on the Winnie the Pooh ride and there were no lines. So we went on it three times and they were even handing out free honey sticks, which was a lie. But, ever, but then Paul Hickman sent me a whole bunch of honey sticks, which was nice. And now I always have honey sticks so that that way you I always have a honey stick too. So anyway, this Winnie the Pooh review made me think of all of that fun stuff. Um, ooh, Josh is pulling out his honey sticks. So everybody at home, if you've got a honey stick, enjoy it with me today. Oh, what is this? Oh, that's awesome. It's a poo with a, with a honey server thing. Oh, that's perfect. That's awesome. Thank I you. Love that. that was just right there in the cupboard, too. <laughs> that's kind of amazing. Yes. Um, oh, I wanted to share a story about the Winnie the Pooh ride where... Um, Have you about... seen the two hidden Mickeys there, Josh? I can't recall at this moment. Where are they? Well, I'll tell you. Okay, so everybody, right now they're they're like a certain percentage of people that are loving this conversation and probably a larger percentage that are not, but that's okay. Oh, so right. right when you go into the Winnie the Pooh ride, you know, it's got like the wooden doors that just open up, right? And then there are the, like these wooden planks that kind of look like tree bark, you know, look like tree stumps or trunks, right? In the trunks, right at about eye level when you're sitting down, there's a hidden Mickey in kind of like the design of the tree trunk, okay? Then later on towards the end, when you're passing around the huffalumps and woozles or something like, right? What are the heffalumps and woozles? Yep. Then there's like the bees and stuff. And there's like all these little uh, circles and colors of bees. On the bottom right corner, there's a little sideways hidden Mickey and like the purple design. I'll show you next time we go, buddy. Anyway. Okay. Tell us Next time we go. We've never been. Ryan's never taken me to. Disneyland. But when, when we do. Have, when we do. I RSVP, yes. When you mentioned the Heffalumps and Woozles, which is a great song, that reminded me we also had a song. Heffalumps and Woozles? Can you sing the song from this episode? Uh, uh, I don't remember it. It was in the movie theater. Um, oh, I, like a half hour before I came on, I knew 
I remember the song. <laughs> Muhammad thinks we've gone so far astray. I love it. He's like, where am I? We're on the, we're on the movie part. That's fine. That's part of the no, show. but you remember those, the song in the episode. No, but also, I was going to say real quick, I'll say this so fast. I was on the Winnie the Pooh ride um, a number of years ago, and it was a girl's birthday. And at the very end of the ride, when they're saying, happy birthday, the girl, she got very emotional. And it really it touched, it hit something in her on her birthday. And it was such a nice moment and provided by Winnie the Pooh. So it has lots of great value. <laughs> but, oh, the song. I want to find the song. I Actually, I downloaded the episode on my phone. Can I play this song or for copyright reasons is that bad? We better not, but you could sing it. Okay. Or Muhammad oh, could have... sing it. Muhammad, do you remember? I do not. Okay. But you remember I watched the show a few days ago. I remember there was a song, but I watched like a few couple of days ago now, so I don't remember the words or anything. Well, okay. let's ask Muhammad a question here. Muhammad, I have, a few, I have a few comments too. Who was your gonna... favorite character? I know mean, I love Eeyore, but we didn't see him. Um, I guess Piglet. I mean, I, you know, it, it wouldn't. Tigger was always a little too crazy for me. Pooh's mm -hmm. Pooh's like the the main is too easy, so I, I guess I go with Piglet. But um, well, actually, let's go ahead and do that, and then I'll come back. I have some other thoughts and stuff. Who Who are you guys' favorite? Um, I definitely have always loved Winnie the Pooh. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's easily my favorite. Um, and Eeyore, I, I love Eeyore. And yeah. I also just want to wonder, going back to when this was new, because sometimes when I watch or, Muppety things, and oh, the voice, they don't, and it's a different performer because someone's not alive, it's very frustrating. So now here, um, Paul Winchell with the original Tigger was Tigger. Um, John Fiedler with the original Pig was, Pig was Piglet. Jim Cummings was Winnie the Pooh. I think this is his first time as Winnie the Pooh. He's been, he does it to this day. But before that, it was Sterling Holloway. And yes, I could hear the difference in their voice, but I do wonder at the time if there were people who were sticklers and like, that doesn't sound like him or that doesn't, you know, I, but to me, I, that never bothered me because I both, as a kid, I probably didn't know there were different performers and I watched them, but now I could tell the difference between the two. Um, and in the credits, I don't know if you noticed, but um, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger were the only ones who got voice credit. None of the mm. Christopher oh. Robin, Christopher Robin, um, Rabbit, um, yeah, Piglet. They they were not voice credited. What is that about? How does that happen? Rude. That's kind of funny. And Rue wasn't in it, as you just said. <laughs> oh, you. Know. All right. Uh, Muhammad's got a lot of things to say, so I got to oh. answer super quickly who my favorite character was. I don't think I had one. I feel like Tigger's a little too obnoxious. He's trying too hard. Everybody knows the guy that's trying too hard. And for me, I'm especially adverse, averse to those people, the ones that are like extra loud and extra pay attention to me. And every. And I'm always like, oh, get me away from this guy. Yeah, it's usually a dude. Um, Maybe my husband is too much after hearing all that. I feel No, like this is beautiful. This is the best showing ever honestly yeah no, I love um this. so i don't know maybe giblet i don't know maybe owl I, i'm trying to remember who my favorite was when i was a kid and i don't we really didn't really see remember owl. Owl. so in this episode right we didn't see owl so who was my favorite i guess maybe poop right i guess probably poop because he wasn't he was very nice and he was very caring and look piglet was trying to overcome his fear uh who wasn't trying to overcome his fear who was just trying to make his friend feel better who was just trying to help his friend overcome his fear and he seems like he's a very wise and caring and empathetic kind of character it seems like his whole point is just to be a a friend and a helper and a healer and a provider and that seems like a very honorable kind of character to have and it's fun and plus he's also you know self-deprecating he laughs at himself and he says all he wants is honey and and he eats too much and he's fat and you know like he's cool like he's chill he gets it he's got the keys to life muhammad you've been so patient what have you got for us <laughs> yeah so i had a couple i had a couple of comments on some of the executional aspects in there so um there were some things i thought were funny there were some things i thought were kind of weird so i mean i mentioned already before like the 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 gum and the popcorn kind of weirded me out. <laughs> and I was like, oh, 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 I don't want to touch that popcorn. Throw that away. Um, I thought the, the popcorn Birdzilla... or the, the gum kept growing too. First, it was a piece of gum. Then it was like, yeah. Yeah. anyway. It stretches. Oh, stretches a lot. Yeah. Uh, I like the I like the name of the movie was Birdzilla. I thought that was funny. 
But there was a, a couple of funny things. So like Tigger was clearly bored while watching the movie. But then afterwards, was like, that was a great movie. Like, wait, you <laughs> were visibly bored. And that's why you were bouncing all over the place. I guess that's a kid thing, though, too. I mean, kids sometimes will do that. Yes, um, ADD. <laughs> maybe so. Yeah. Um, I did like the idea that the costume being a giant carrot. I thought that was funny. And, you know, I, I was initially I thought it was funny initially when Rabbit got scared with it. But then when that became like such a long gag, I got a little uh, uh, bored with it. Um, the transition, though, from the sort of the slapstickness to Piglet being sad felt very sudden to me. Like, whoa, we just went like dark <laughs> all of a sudden there, which I mean, I didn't, it didn't bother me, but it just felt kind of abrupt. Maybe it was intended to be a little bit abrupt. So that was that was commentable. <laughs> I made a note of that, like unusually sad and deep part all of a sudden in there. I couldn't tell what was happening, though, with the whole when that carrot costume flew onto Pooh. If Pooh was intentionally like just rolling around, or or was he actually tangled up and didn't know how to untangle himself? That that I was a little mm-hmm. bit puzzled about. But those are some of the executional aspects that I I thought were worthy of comment. Mm-hmm. Josh, your rebuttal. <laughs> oh well, the, the gum that it would stretch, and that didn't seem <laughs> far fetched. And I like that because they're watching this movie, and there's a scary spider, and they wind up in like a spider's web from the gum, like that all worked for me See and Muhammad. felt um then it felt realistic like for some of these characters with very little brain that's a very easy misunderstanding to have happen um and i think because the way it opened where we saw the real world and what's really going on and we never saw more of that and we don't in the show i think maybe that leads us to wanting wait is there an explanation what is really going on here and i, I wonder if and I think the show probably, as it goes on, learns, let's have less of that so people don't wonder. Because we're never then in the human world or the real Christopher Robin's real world um, for the rest of the show. Except one time, I guess, they go under his bed. And there's a whole lot of adventure and scary things under there. Don't look under the bed. Um, Gopher wasn't in this episode either. Ooh, Gopher. I don't know that one. I don't even remember Gopher. Oh, he was he first or appeared on the in love many, boat, maybe. many of the food. And he talked about, he wasn't even in the book. He wasn't in a a known book, but that was a joke um, in the original movie, how he's not even in the book. But when Winnie the Pooh got stuck in the the rabbit's doorway and Gopher came, check it out. The movie is great. The movie's classic. Well, you know, here's something that we forgot to cover. This episode. Um, (laughs) uh, Josh. How did you feel about this episode in particular? Did you love it? Was it nostalgic? Was it an episode you had seen before? Was it as good or better than you remember it? Were there any thoughts you had specific to this episode? I I, you know, I, I, I didn't really remember this episode. So when it opened, I felt like I didn't remember it. I didn't love this episode. And that caused me to be sad, as you could venture from maybe some of my clothes or the way I'm dressed, you might think, oh, I'm going to love everything about it. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I know I love Winnie the Pooh, like, but it wasn't a good episode, unfortunately. And I hope, and I don't know what future episodes hold in my mind, my memory, and it has the nostalgia, so there's things to enjoy. I just think this was a weak episode. At, at least that's what I hope it is. And this, it's a wonderful show, and I think we miss less Christopher Robin, more of the other characters. Um, and it seemed like the, like kind of like in Star Trek, we have so many side characters, but you no, know, it's usually Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. And here, it felt like the trio was Pooh, Tigger, and Piglet. Everyone else felt like outside of them. Like, okay, are they the main guys? Are they is Piglet more important than Eeyore and Owl? I guess they are more per- on the periphery. I wonder why they didn't make it into this pilot episode. You would think that would have been a note from Disney. We need them all in there. Hmm. How do you think they came up with the names for like Owl and Rabbit and Piglet? Okay. Well, I could answer for Owl. That one, because, um, wait, who? Uh, uh, that was, uh, now, who? Uh, I think because that was funny. Said, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> oh my God, I just raised a few points which I needed. Um, but I'm my theory on Owl is because 
he gets hurt. And when you get hurt, you say, ow. Oh. No, the first one was no. stick with the first one. Okay. <laughs> and, and rabbit, rab, rabbit. Hmm. I don't know, maybe because he would steal things from the earth, like the soil. So instead of rob, he rabs it. I'm going to rab it. Mm-mm. And that's why he was concerned no. when he saw the big carrot. Okay, like the obvious thing is that he's a rabbit, so they called him rabbit. I was trying to be more creative. Do you think when... Oh, okay. I was just going to say, do you think when Piglet saw Pooh wrestling around in that costume, do you think he even would care it? That was Sorry. good. Sorry, Muhammad. <laughs> Muhammad doesn't care for these kind of jokes either. <laughs> I was wondering for Tigger if the, the original Christopher Robin named it that just as an error. Like you look at the word and it's like Tigger. Mm-hmm. So the original Christopher Robin was a guy. It was actually a real person. So, oh, okay, that's interesting. That's... Maybe. So, I got to be honest. I could talk about Winnie the Pooh forever. Not so much because this episode deserves it, but just because it's fun to talk about Pooh with you guys. Like I find it very enjoyable. We do a lot of poo talk. Yeah, especially because Josh has so much knowledge about poo. Like it's interesting. Here's something that a lot of people don't realize, and a lot of people do realize is that it's very interesting to hear people talk about something uh, that they are interested in or passionate in, passionate about. I should say about which they are passionate. Somebody's passionate about something. It's interesting for us to hear, it. even if we're not passionate about that particular subject matter. It's interesting for us to see somebody being passionate about something. Anyway, so it's really interesting to hear what you have to say, Josh. Did you see the right. movie Christopher Robin? No. Can I recommend it? That's oh, also interesting. Uh, would you watch it, if, or you're just letting me recommend it? It's oh no, you can um, watch the movie. <laughs> yeah, definitely feel free to recommend it to others, Josh. Oh. I want to show you something. Um, when I have a picture on my fridge from when I went to see um, Christopher Robin in theaters, I brought him with me. Uh, wait, I, I my camera's moving. It's so annoying. I love it. That's us at watching Christopher Robin together. Okay, Aww. it's a no, it's a great movie. You have to watch it. I love how it zooms on poo whenever you I know, that's why I didn't say anything, because I wanted to keep the camera right there. That's so good. Well, now we have to... Center Stage. I'm on this iPad, and it's a feature called Center Stage. It follows... I love it. I think it's great, because it's not only does it follow you, but it also frames the two poos as well, which is brilliant, because that's actually how we would want it to be framed. We don't just want you there. We want to see poo one and poo two, and they're both... Actually, both poos are number two, but... That's beside the point. The point I is, I had a, a, a Zoom audition, and I had, I did it on this, and it was very the casting people because I had a walk off frame, but it would follow me. Oh no! And it, and it, and I did. I don't know how to turn it off. I tried figuring out how to turn this feature off, and I I don't know if you could. I don't know, but it's perfect for this review. I'm loving it. I think it's amazing. Uh, it's very entertaining, and it's. It's like as if somebody were actually working the camera and putting in the poos and doing all that stuff. Totally. But here's the problem, Josh, is that we have to move forward oh. and talk about you for a moment. See if the if oh. iPad really smart, it would zoom in on Josh right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there's a way to get it. Let's. There has to be. I feel like if let's. I'm sure there's ways because it's sometimes. I don't, okay, I can't do it. It'll be a waste. It'll do it at some point. Sometimes it just does it. Um, yeah, sometimes it just does it. So here's what you could do. You could grab a poo and hold them up like that. Maybe it'll zoom. Yep, there it goes. Look at uh, that. Look so how smart it is. So Josh, what's new with you, by the way? What, is there anything new? What's going on? I know there's a writer strike going on, but maybe you're still getting some acting gigs here or there. Or maybe you've got some new ventures you'd like to talk about. Uh, well, I did. I just recently did a television commercial. Um, so hopefully that will air soon. And I had an interesting moment in this commercial. I had to eat um, food in it. And <laughs> I've had to eat food in other commercials. And in my past, that I said I've always been offered a spit bucket. And I've always 
I've never utilized it thinking, oh, I'm a professional. I don't need that. But this was the first time that I actually decided to utilize it and actually felt more professional. And I felt more mature growing up because I don't need a beef. Well, it also wasn't healthy food. What was the food item? Um, it's a it category was, if you can't it was, it, was, it. It, was, it was chocolates. Oh, yum. And that's uh, when you no, chose to spit out finally uh, with the best food ever. Now, everybody no. at home, uh, a spit bucket, if you don't know, is just, a, you know, like an actor has to do the same take 15 times that's or whatever. So if they're eating a burger, they can't eat six burgers worth just to do your commercial. Plus, there's no guarantee the actor even really enjoys what you're force feeding them, but they can act like they are. And then when they say cut, let them spit it into a bucket and keep going. So anyway, it's just like a thing that they do because it's really a necessity most of the time. Well, I still got the remnants of chocolate and maybe some of it, but if I, and it was good, but also it, I felt bad for the people nearby because in spitting it out in this thing, which was kept next to me, it did look like, um, oh. and for those who are only listening, I, I'm referencing, referencing poo. Um, he held up his poo. It, <laughs> no, so that was a very new thing where I was proud of myself because even though this is delicious, I don't know how many takes we're going to do. And it felt like you could potentially get us tummy ache. So I... That was new, so I don't know when um, this will come out or if me eating the chocolate will even make it into the final thing. Um, so I know, yeah, the writers are on strike, and I guess yeah. supposedly soon the actors are going to be joining. So I hope that but with the unity of the actors and writers together, that that's able to resolve things, and then we could go back to work soon. And when you mentioned this movie, that you produced a lot of cool people were in. I was wondering, and you were naming the names. I was hoping, am I going to be in it? No, I don't remember being in or. Well, Ryan. there's going to be a there. We've done two of them, and there's going to be a, a third uh, movie possibly done. So, if that's the case, we'll see. You never know. There was also Sean Kinney who played Christopher Pike, Captain Pike in the yeah. '60s, the original series, wow. '60s. Yeah. So we got a lot of. Uh, We've got Star Trek actors from every single one of the first five uh, Star Trek series. Nice. Well, not including the animated series. Right. Well, anyway, but we'll be calling your number. You know, we always do, Josh. You're a phenomenal actor and everybody loves you. That's why you're always so busy working. You always have such great stories for us. Do you have other gigs recently besides the commercial you mentioned? I, I Yes, I was just a part of something else recently that I did in... Las Vegas, and hopefully maybe that's the, it's something that's premature to speak about. But I got to, to, yeah. But it was it was a fun thing, and oh oh you no, said category I, like commercial TV movie. Um, it's in the category of like a pilot presentation kind okay. of thing, where where people are making something to show, hey, look what we did. So it's in that category. Um, you could have done a Wheel of Fortune category, which was always my favorite. They'd be like, the category is thing. And you're like, oh, thanks. That, uh, boy, that really narrows it down, bro. Oh, so you, mean Jeopardy? Jeopardy? you mean Jeopardy? No, I think it was Wheel of Fortune. Was it Wheel of Fortune? Oh, you're right, because there was first place to think. You're right, you're right. Yeah. It was a Wheel of Fortune thing. Yeah. Um, and I also, I don't know if you saw it, I censored a story on the spot where I thought of a story from my time in Las Vegas. And I was like, no, don't say that. Um, earlier, just before this, um, Ryan told me a joke and and then I told him a joke. And, and I was like, that's a funny joke, but let's just keep that to ourselves. We both, we both agreed that our joke should not be said while we're recording. So we just and had to just let it go. Extra sensitive, even though there's... It's a nice joke. It is a very but, nice joke. However, but, sorry, were you going to say something, Josh? I was just, yeah, Muhammad knows. He's got the karate chop ready. That means, sorry, we got to move on. No more okay. jokes, only seriousness. This is, we're back to work. This is work now. One quick thing before we close this out, Josh, where can people follow you? Oh, um, 
Well, I guess if I'm walking down the street, that no, um, um, I'm Mr. Josh Sussman on Instagram. I'm um, Mr. Josh Sussman on Facebook. Mr. Josh Sussman on TikTok. All of those are verified. I used to be verified at Josh Sussman on Twitter, but then Elon Musk took away everyone's verification unless you have a million followers or you pay for it. And um, what do you think about paying? How for close? It? I don't pay for how Twitter. close are you to having a million followers, Josh? Oh, Everybody at home, follow Josh so he could reach a million and then he can have his free verification. He doesn't have to pay for it. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I think I'm only like 940,000 away. So, uh, no, but I think the people who had over a million are grandfathered in. So I think that even if I get a million now, I don't think it comes back. Kind of oh. like right now on Instagram, I think if people are verified, they're paying for it. But because I was verified for many years, I don't have to do it. And it's like fourteen ninety nine a month or something like that. For On Instagram? Check, but, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, hmm. people could now pay for it. Uh, it's, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts are sadly that we're going to have to move on. Um, also, Josh is a great person to follow. He plays, yeah. he plays great stuff on He's Instagram. a great person. Well, I didn't know anything about that Instagram thing, but that's good knowledge. Had no idea. Um, all right, Muhammad, <laughs> we are holding line. you back no more. Line on the bottom. Bottom line. Nothing terrible. All just bottom line. All right. Muhammad reminds us it is now time for the terrible twos. Oh, nothing the terrible. final two <laughs> questions of the show and they go a little something like this. Dr. Noor, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give this first episode of The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh entitled, Who Ought to Be in Pictures? Well, I'll say you guys guessed it pretty much dead on. If you look at my, I don't know, it doesn't show up when I show it on screen, but I have written on here at the bottom of my page, I wrote the number five. And I believe that's yeah. what you guys both predicted was going to be pretty close to what I'd said. But yeah, I mean, again, it, if I was a different demographic, if I was the target demographic, I'd probably like it a lot more. For me, like, you know, I, I have some memories of poo, but like very vague. And then like, I, I enjoyed it in the context of, you know, being with my kids while they watch poo and things like that. But I, I'm not predisposed looking for like shows that are that are a little bit more engaging than this, at least this episode was. So mm -hmm. flip side is it wasn't bad, you know, it was okay. For, for like a little kid show, it was fine. Josh, your thoughts on a scale of one to 10? Well, first, I just want to compliment Dr. Muhammad's prediction for me, which he says we're going to be complicated. And I feel like it was very spot on that um, as a whole for the show, I have very high remarks because, yes, I love this show. But this episode, I did not. And I'm tempted to give this episode a 4.999995. Um, but, but just for this episode. Um, but as a whole, like if people like I would recommend the show, I, I think they're because I know and I've seen them that it's a, such a nice show. But this episode is not a. It's weak, and that's why I, I gave it as close to a five as possible. But it, overall, anything below a five is a thumbs down. As Assessment you know. rule: <laughs> four point nine 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 five. Is that what you said? Wow! Yeah. He put in a lot of nines and then threw a five in there just to confuse <laughs> us. <laughs> I love that. That was awesome. It worked. All Not right. To confuse you, but to be precise, I was precise. All right, Josh, if you're so precise, how many nines were there? 4.999995. Oh. Okay. So whatever. I could say it, but I can't count it. Don't make me count it. I could just say it. All right. Works for me. <laughs> uh, judges? Yep. Yeah. Judges say yes. All right. Cool. So. Thank you, Judge. Uh, here they come, fast and furious. The number I'm going to give you. Ten from Ryan. Uh, look, I'm, this is the one part I am looking forward to because it's going to really set Josh off. He is the guy that created the Sussman rule who says, oh, no. if you give something a four, you by rule did not enjoy it. Because once I said I enjoyed the show, but it's a four. And he said, hang on a second. You're not allowed to say that you enjoyed it if you only gave it a four. 
I am not doing that this time. Okay. I'm giving it a 3.5. <laughs> but saying, yeah, it's kind of enjoyable. I kind of like it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> oh. Goodbye. That was Josh saying goodbye. So yeah, it was a three, it's a 3.5 for me, but it, similar to what uh Josh was saying, in that I don't dislike the show. I like the show. I like that it exists. I want it to exist. I want it to make people happy. I want old people to watch it and reminisce and feel good about it. I want kids to watch it and love it. I want people like us to watch it and get really interesting, inspiring quotes from Winnie the Pooh. So I'm very happy this show exists. It makes me very happy. I'm glad, like I'm a huge fan of Winnie the Pooh existing. It makes me happy and I think it makes the world a better place. This particular episode, eh. So that's where we are. Uh-oh, Josh is showing off some more threads. Yeah. Uh, question number two. For the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. But now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet, Dr. Muhammad Noor, would you, of your own volition, watch the second episode? So, like... If I were to have a grandkid and they would want me to sit with them as they watched it. I hope your I son had... is hearing you hinting this right now. But... Or, or my daughter, too. <laughs> I wouldn't be opposed. I might pull out my phone or at that point, maybe a hollow pad or something like that. and be messing with that while they're doing it. But on my own, no. <laughs> Definitely not. So hurtful. What about you, Josh? Would you, of your own volition, watch the second episode? I would scan for something that a familiar i remember that episode and i love that i want to watch that one so is that a different what's the rule on that does because i know the question is would you watch the second one but what about i want to watch an episode i know i love let me check that one out for I, I, i've been feeling sad today what's the sussman rule on that that's a good point we've got a sussman rule on question number one but we don't have a sussman rule on Question number two, what do you think, Muhammad? Where Where's he going with this? Does this work? Well, because it's tough. It's, it's not a serialized show. Um, so and I, it's not an anthology show like The Twilight Zone where the episodes don't connect. But all each episode really is a standalone episode. It's not even like there's, it's like a cheers, like with the Sam, Diane, will they, won't they? There's no constant through line. So I would say if the, the question is, would you watch another one? Yes. But no, your yeah. question is, will I watch the second? Would I watch the second one? I would, because it, it, it's nostalgia. There's something very special about revisiting good memories from childhood. And I have amazing memories from this. And I, yes, I would. That makes me so happy because I'm definitely obviously going to say no. But this <laughs> way... You know, it's great that it's we mixed. have somebody giving it a yes and giving it the love that it deserves. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's a no for all the reasons I said. Again, nothing but love and positivity for that show. I hope it continues. I hope they keep making the cartoon a million times over. Uh, you don't need Christopher Robin, in my opinion. Just make it about Pooh and Piglet and Eeyore. Make, meet some new guys, too. Meet Fish and Wasp and Wasp. Lichen. You know, whatever. Like, just go, go meet Mrs. Lichen. You know, whatever. I uh, like that. Thank you, Josh. Uh, all right, it's time to move on, everybody. We've had so much fun with all of you. I do wish that we could talk more about this because this has been a lot of fun. Um, so please make sure you are liking, liking this video. Damn it, I blew it. I should have said that. Make sure you're liking this video. Uh, and in the comments below, make your suggestions of what shows you'd like us to review. That would be swell. And what I'm trying to say is this podcast was sweet and wonderful, like honey. This, this podcast was not full of poo. <laughs> uh, this podcast was filled with happy memories and with good friends. Yeah. Love it. Well said. God, you guys leave me with such joy in my heart. It's like I just watched another Winnie the Pooh episode, but it, I like the plot better. 
<laughs> can, I get you to, can I get you to commit to watching Christopher Robin, the movie, with Ewan McGregor? It's a live action film. Tell you what. You can get me to say that I will watch it, yes. <laughs> but you, but committing to watching it is a different story. But I will... What if I invited you over and I had popcorn or whatever, sna a snack of your request? You got yourself a commitment, Josh. You got oh, yourself no, you... a deal. Brian's like, we're having sushi. Because <laughs> you know what's, what's funny about... <laughs> no, I'm vegetarian. I know, teasing. Uh, veggie sushi. Good. That's true. Cucumber uh, roll. We'll get some Erewhon stuff. Uh, Josh, you mentioned there's that new one close to your place. Because you know what, what's funny is I actually pictured Josh. I was like, you know it would be fun to actually just hang out with Josh and watch a few episodes of Winnie the Pooh and eat a bunch of trash. It's funny. I was thinking about that while we were recording this like 15, 20 minutes ago. So when you say, would you watch Christopher Robin with me at my place and eat some snacks? I'm like, that's kind of what I pictured. You're on. You, you can are. hold Josh's poo too while you do it. I'm going to show you Good night, everybody. <laughs> we could, oh, there she is. Josh and I could each have a poo on the floor. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh. What's going on here? Oh, look at this. Number one. I love Nevada it. Fan. Wow. That's really cool. I want one of those. I want a Josh Sussman here at my house, too. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's He's awesome. Nice. Now, everybody, on our way out, it's been a great time. Make sure you share this video with all of your pals and everybody you know. And remember what Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg always likes to say Don't forget to be an organ donor and don't forget to watch the first of things. All right, everybody, freeze frame like Tigger. <laughs> Smile.